Hello crafty friends and welcome to another Not Just Christmas in July video. Today I'm going to create a card for you as usual but I'm also at the end of the video going to show you several other cards that I've made using the same design idea, technique, tools and supplies. So if Christmas in July isn't your thing, don't worry because the ideas and techniques I share today you can adapt to non-Christmas cards. The first thing I'm going to do is take my torn edge ruler and create a strip with a torn edge. I've been really enjoying torn edges lately. And just a little handy hint, if you've got something with a grid on it like this mat, line your paper up with the grid and then line your torn edge ruler up with the grid. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this just gives you a bit of a chance of getting a kind of, what's that, perpendicular edge. So the way I've torn that, I've got the fluffy edge facing me. I want both of my edges to have the fluffy edge on the same side. So to do that, I need to tear this side in a similar way to the way I tore the other side. So I flipped my paper round. I'm going to line up my ruler again, just to, you know, get these two lines parallel. And then I'm going to tear it and I've got my fluffy edges on this side and my smooth flat edges on this side. So I'm using tape runner to stick this to my card. Again, I can line my card up and use this to line up my torn edge strip roughly. And now I can snip off the overhang. Next, I'm going to take a strip of gold washi tape and put this to the left of my strip again. But I've turned the card around and lined it up with my grid because when I'm putting washi tape down, I just find it easier to do it horizontally. Something about the fact that it's sticky. If I try and do it vertically like that, I get in a mess. So I'm going to line this up with the lines on my grid and press it down. So that's already looking very Christmassy to me. We've got a nice bit of white and gold. Now I'm going to add some colour. I'm going to cut some strips using these stitched strip dies from white cardstock and then colour it. For my colour, I'm using Abandoned Coral Distress Oxide. It's almost red, but slightly not. A bit pinky with a bit of a warm orangey tone. If you've got pre-coloured card or coloured cardstock that you want to cut from, you can do that. You don't have to use an inked bit of paper. I'll add some tape runner to the back of this. This is my Crafter's Companion tape runner. And I use this because it only sticks to the bit it touches rather than the ATG, which just lays down a big old slab of sticky and sticks to everything. So now I've got just that. I haven't got any sticky hanging over the sides. I'm going to add this roughly in the middle of that band. That's got a little bit of an overhang, so I'll just snip that off. So I think it was in my last, not just Christmas in July video, or maybe it was the one before, I mentioned that I had a big pile of these wooden stars that needed to be used up. So I thought I'd use some up today. And again, I'm using this tape runner to stick these wooden stars, two big ones and one little one, onto some vellum. You could use glue for this. The reason I'm not using glue is because I actually ran out of glue last night. So while I'm waiting for some glue to arrive, I'm going to have to make do with the adhesives that I have on hand. What I'm doing here is trimming off the excess vellum. And now I've got a vellum backed wooden star. And the reason I'm doing this is that it just adds a little bit of something to these wooden stars. They're not just plain wooden stars, they've got a bit of frosting in the background. If you wanted a bit more of something on your wooden stars, you could even use a foiled vellum. That would look quite nice. Or you could heat emboss on your vellum as long as it's heat embossable. 
So there was maybe something white or something gold or something silver, depending on your colour scheme, behind your stars or inside your stars. So now I'm going to get this tape runner again, pop it on the back of all my stars. It's pretty good, this tape runner, it's not showing through vellum, so I'm not too worried about that. You could always back your vellum with some double-sided adhesive before you stick it to your stars so the back of it is adhesive and sticks down nicely to your card so now i am going to have whoops have my stars cascading down my card like this i like to have my stars in the same orientation as each other but you could turn them and have them higgledy piggledy if you like and now for a simple sentiment this just says celebrate and i've cut it out with a stitch rectangle die you could pop this up on a bit of foam if you wanted to give it some height but i'm just going to add it here nestling around these stars and there you have one clean and simple fairly quick and easy christmas card do stick around for a few more minutes because I've got some non-Christmas cards that I've made using this design idea and similar tools and supplies. So I've got five non-Christmas cards for you made using this same idea. This one I used cog dies to cut out cogs from craft card brown cardstock. I actually cut three of each size and layered them one on top of the other and glued them together and then backed them with vellum. And I did this because the only wooden shapes I've got are stars. So if you don't have any wooden shapes, you can make faux wooden shapes using brown card. If you want them to look a bit more wood grainy, you could swipe some brown ink on top or use a wood grain stamp or stencil, or you could even cut your shapes from patterned paper that has a wood grain pattern on it. So as I say, we've got cogs on this card. I've got Victorian velvet on my strip. I always think Victorian velvet goes well with cogs. Something about steampunk in my brain, I think. Maybe I could have used a copper washi tape behind as well. That might have been a bit more steampunky. But I popped the celebrate on top of the cogs because I just felt it looked quite nice there, just a different placement. But I did keep the whole thing over to the left like I did on this card. So all these cards have the torn white paper strip, the gold washi tape, a coloured strip, faux wooden elements, a celebrate, but the elements differ, some of the positioning differs and the colour of the strips differ on all these cards. Here's one I made with octagonal shapes. Again, these were multiple die cuts layered one on top of the other with vellum on the back. This time I put the strip down the right hand side just for a change and I nestled the celebrate amongst these two here and it actually falls in the middle more or less of the card in this direction. So it's quite attention grabbing. The dies I used to make these octagonal frames were octagonal stitched nesting dies. So if you want to cut out a frame, just put your nesting dies inside each other on a bit of something sticky, cut them out and you will get the frame shapes. The colour on this strip came from scattered straw distress oxide and I added some hearts inside the octagons for a bit of interest. Next we have a central design. We've got peacock feathers on the strip. I made the balloons with nesting balloon dies, backed them with vellum, and I layered them with the smaller ones behind and the larger one in the middle. And I like that you can see through the vellum to the shape of the other balloons behind. I added a little heart here in this empty space, again for a bit of interest, and put the celebrate on top, just over to the side a little. So everything's in this main center. I wasn't sure about the balloon frames. I wasn't sure they looked quite right with this little knobble, the balloon knot thing on the inside as well as on the outside. It didn't quite make sense in my brain, but I think they look fine when they're on a card. If I was gonna be really fussy before I cut them out, I could have snipped off those bits with a pair of scissors. I'm just gonna wait for the aeroplane to go overhead before I do any more talking. 
with this shape I did try the layering up of die cuts thing but it got a bit messy there was just too much glue going around so instead I pulled out my double-sided foam which is actually quite thin it's maybe only one or two millimeters thick it's from sticks too and as I say it's double-sided foam adhesive and I stuck it on some brown card and then die cut from it and I got a much neater result with that these little hearts that I'm popping everywhere I also just punched out of some scraps that have got the brown card with the foam on the back so if you don't fancy doing the layering of die cuts you can always use some thin foam to create that dimensional look and here we have a landscape version so if I turn it portrait you can see I've just put everything over to the left hand side again but if you flip it on its side it's towards the top and I use nesting dies and the sticks to foam to cut out my heart which I backed with vellum I added another little heart there just to fill up the empty space added the celebrate here I coloured the strip with milled lavender and I only used two hearts on here these are the two smallest frames I could get with my nesting heart dies and I thought a third smaller heart would just be too much for this so I, I decided to stick with two for that one and here we have our final card, another landscape card. I put the strips over to the right hand side, turned it around so they're now down the bottom. I added three square shapes. These are layered die cuts, not foam. Backed them with vellum and then put a foam backed heart in each one. And I did play around with putting the sentiment here and about, but I couldn't find a place for it to go. And the only place I could think of it to go would be across this heart and it just covered it up. And I do really like the big wooden or faux wooden heart. I think it, it needs to be there on its own without anything covering it up. So this is a sentimentless card, which is absolutely fine because you can just write your message on the inside. Right, there we go. Six cards, all made using the same design idea, similar tool supplies, techniques, all celebratory but suitable for more than just Christmas. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with whatever you've got in your stash at home. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.